And welcome to another Core 4 episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode 414, recorded Monday, March 13th, 2023. Tonight we're talking about that latest slasher hotness, Scream 6, or Six Cream, if you will. Uh, before we get into the review, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., we got your boy, Randeezy. What's up, man? Don't touch that dial. You need to hear this. How do, buddy? <laughs> How are we holding up after that sixth cream? That sixth cream. Uh, it's a lot of cream. It's a lot of cream. I'm, uh, I'm lactose intolerant, too, so I'm going to the bathroom like every 12 minutes. It's a problem. Rob, How about you? Even if it's a lie, it's a HIPAA violation, so be careful. <laughs> even if it's a lie. Hey, this is my information I'm sharing, not yours. I, uh, okay, you got me there. All right. You hey, got me there. Washington, D.C. is no doubt going to be the uh, location of Scream 7, right? Did you hear this? God willing. <laughs> got some motherfuckers that need Merkin. I want to see you as an extra, <laughs> just, you know, getting murdered in front of the White House or some shit. <laughs> If I'm an extra, I'm definitely like going to be just like me scratching my ass on the side of the road or something. <laughs> it's not going to be flattering. It's not possible. Hell um, yeah. <laughs> uh, last but not yeah. least, calling in from South Korea, we got your boy Soju. What's up, man? Oh, what a bitch, your boy. He'll make you feel brand new. You know he'll inspire you. Let's hear it. Soju stains for soju. Wow, <laughs> wow. What if they wow. go to Korea for the dulcet seven? tones? <laughs> <laughs> International. Dude, I, I mean, where else are they going to go? And then yeah. It, it, it always skips every. It doesn't go anywhere else terrestrial. It's going to space next. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Go uh, space. Yeah. Stumbling his ass through space. He can't. Yeah, he's just do like it. trying to wade through space. <laughs> With a knife. Slipping and sliding around, just <laughs> slamming into everything. Astronaut <laughs> fucking ghost face. I'd watch it. I'd watch it. Oh, man. Uh, before we get into the main event, let's tackle some housekeeping real quick. Our April poll is currently posted on our Patreon website. If you support us at the $5 level or above, you get the chance to vote on a movie we're talking about this April. The theme for April is weed, because 420 and <laughs> shit. Uh, the three movies to vote between are Troll 2, This Is The End, and Scary Movie. Whoa, Bob, tell me how those numbers are looking. Man, Scary Movie is still winning, which is blowing my mind continuously. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Troll Deuce is in second place, and This Is The End is in last place. Okay. They had a little turn there, but um, yeah. it was it, it's still pretty close, though, but yes. a lot of people have voted, so it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, I wonder if the all the votes for Scary Movie have something to do with this new Scream hotness dropping. Like, obviously, there's a lot of Scream references. Uh, and shit. May, yeah, maybe. 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 Could be. Could be. Uh, get your <laughs> votes in before the end of March, and we'll see what movie we're blazing to in April. Um, (laughs) We got a brand new mini cast dropping this Friday. If you support us at the $10 level or above, you get access to a whole back catalog of Patreon exclusive episodes. We add to that every single month this Friday. Uh, Randizi, I think this is yours. You're talking about, or no, this is juices. I don't fucking know. Baby Ruby. Who's talking about baby Ruby? I'm talking baby. You should have played the odds, but I should have. I should have. (laughs) Um, yeah, I was talking Baby Ruby. Um, that was one I recorded during uh, February for Women in Horror Month. This has got our boy Jon Snow in it, but it's um, it's about uh, mostly about like new motherhood. 
So, um, and it's, it's good. It's like one of the best movies that's ever kind of, uh, covered that subject in a like really effective way. I thought, so yeah, I, I thought it was done really well. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, check out baby Ruby and then, uh, slam our mini cast into your ear holes and see what Soju thought about it. Um, in other Patreon news, we are opening the you pick the flick tier oh here we go oh my mark God. your calendar here we go here we go here we go uh, here we go opening <laughs> su- oh, no not again <laughs> opening on sunday march 19th at an undisclosed time of day uh, this is the only way you can outright pick a movie for us to review on the show. We open this up quarterly. There's only five <laughs> spots per quarter, so they're they're difficult to get. They usually go pretty quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll just have to refresh our Patreon page uh, throughout the day and see when it's up there and grab one if you can. And that's that's about a hundred dollar spot, right, Bob? That cost you a full one hundred dollar value, but Shit. the discounts on this thing, <laughs> my God, seventy five percent off, baby. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we'll send you a, a little personalized sticker. It's like a VHS tape, and it'll have the name of the movie that you chose and the date we recorded it and the rating and all that stuff. Um, and also, uh, if if it's your first time picking, we'll send you an enamel pin as well. Um, <sighs> And uh, you can send in a voicemail or email with your thoughts about the movie you chose for us to review. Uh, so you get a lot of perks with it. Uh, now you're not just picking a movie for us to talk about. There's a lot of fun little shit we mail you. Um, okay. Quite literally, shit. We just mail you a box of shit. So <laughs> oh yeah, into that. that's a service we provide. That uh, sounds great. Sunday, March nineteenth. <laughs> Get a box of shit. Uh, I think that's how we Once got. Once I pooped in my pants in school, and I just left it in all day. <laughs> just <laughs> Oh, that poor son of a bitch. Um, (laughs) That's all we got going on for Patreon. Uh, We do have a guest spot coming up. All three of us are going to be sitting in with Caitlin over at Plug It Up uh, later this week. We're going to be talking about the the Stepford Wives. Whoa. Yes. The colors, Duke. The colors. <laughs> the it's one be great. from the, the early 2000s, 2005 or whatever it was. Um, so check 2004, that out. 2004. The Frank Oz flick. Yeah, Frank fucking Oz directed that thing. Uh, check that out. And I'm not 100% sure when Caitlin's dropping it. It might be this week, but definitely in the near future, that'll be coming at you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gentle Mags, you guys have anything you, you need to plug? No, nothing else. Just a reminder, we got all that sweet Scream YouTube content. So head on over there. Check it out. Check it out. Tis the season. Tis, Tis the season. For Scream Until in next March. year. Until next year when <laughs> Seven Cream comes and out. And next year and next year <laughs> and forever. A hundred years, five cream. Yeah, we got a whole tiki drink devoted to scream. If you can handle it, if you've got the pusser's rum. Hmm, if you're oh. not a little bitch. <laughs> wow. Oh, whoa, whoa, words are being sung around. <laughs> you know that I'm the cream of the crop. <laughs> That's one of the best bums wherever. Oh, yeah. Have, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the cream. Uh, All right. Well, I think our houses are clean. This house is clean. Let's get into the main event. We are talking about six cream, and we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? (laughs) Bob. Oh, yeah. Have you pre-ordered this box? (laughs) What do you think? We kind of did this whole screen box thing last week, so I yeah, can't really. <laughs> yeah. And There's too many screams going thing. on. There's a lot of screams. <laughs> a lot of screams happening. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of screams, a lot of boxes. You just you just got to have to figure it out. You can pre-order this already. You can do it. Uh, there's even a steel did book. You? Yes, of course. Uh, yes, after I shit on this movie all day, yes. Shit. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm living in a nightmare. <laughs> Shit out of We mean only exclusive <laughs> wrestling bumps from now yeah. on. Well, look, wrestling you're talking promos. to the right guy. Uh, <laughs> we're talking Scream 6. Uh, this was just dropped. Uh, 2023, of course. Rated R with a runtime of two hours and two minutes. Uh, this is coming at you from Radio Silence, the collective um, directors, Matt 
Bettinelli Oplin and Tyler Gillette, written by James Vanderbilt, Guy Busick, and of course based on characters uh, created by Kevin Williamson. I think he was like assistant producer or something. I don't know. He was involved with this somehow. Uh, <laughs> this stars your girl Courtney Cox, Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, uh, Jasmine Savoy Brown, a uh, little bit of skeet in this one, Dermot Mulrooney, and of, <laughs> of course your boy Roger Jackson coming back to voice Ghostface per usual. Old Flash Thompson even made the cut. <laughs> your boy. Uh, oh, yeah. New movie, of course, first time watch for all of us here. Gentlemen's, would you recommend people check out Six Cream? Uh, Randeezy, kick us off. Um, would I recommend Six Cream? Um, if you liked five other creams, then certainly yes. Um, I don't have too much stronger of a recommend than that. Um, if you're looking for a general slasher, sure. If you're looking for a, a Scream sequel, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sure. That's the cadence of my recommendation, and I need you to convey it perfectly. Then. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, so, Ju, uh, what about you? Uh, yeah, I generally would recommend people check this out. I think it's a fun theater watch um, for people to get some good thrills in early March. But the thing about this one, though, I, I guess it's kind of the case with Buy Cream, uh, but... I this one if you haven't seen any other screams or you haven't seen them all this one will spoil them all for you all literally <laughs> every well, yeah. single one so if you I have no intention kind of true of most of them though isn't it I, but they literally like run it down of like each film this was the with first pictures. this was the that, second that's yeah true, with yeah. pictures and names no that's fair and that's like fair. yeah <laughs> so I don't think any other film does that so um. So be warned if you, you know, if you've seen like one and four and like you're thinking about watching two and you kind of, you know, don't want it ruined, then don't, don't hop right into this. But, but I do think this is a fun theater watch, um, for a horror. Um, so I would recommend generally people check it out. Uh, Bob, how about you? Would you recommend people check this one out? Generally? Yeah, I would recommend it. I, th- I think it's just a lot of fun to go watch these sort of like big event horror movies. Mm, Uh, Six cream is getting a hell of a lot of buzz and um, a lot of really solid reviews. Uh, There is definitely like a lot of excited folks in my theater. So it was just like, I don't know, a bit of a, I don't know, just like a fun vibe, a fun atmosphere. Um, So if you're into that kind of thing, yeah, (laughs) totally. Um, This is an interesting, I hate fun. (laughs) Uh, I've got this movie called Banshees of Insurance. You're going to love it. <laughs> I do. Dude, <yeah. laughs> I do too. What a bummer. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it's. I this, decided that I'm lonely. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, this mo- Yeah, this movie's getting like a whole lot of love. So uh, check it out if you haven't. I'm sure it's going to be sticking around in theaters for a while. Um, so yeah, we're going to spoil the shit out of this movie. And uh, here comes your warning. Spoiler warning. <laughs> Bob, did you type up this plop synopsis? I got it. Got it right here. Good. Plop it on us, big dog. Give it to me. Here goes the whole plot. Uh, We open up with film studies professor Laura Crane. She is lured outside of a bar into an alley in New York City and murdered by Ghostface, who is then immediately revealed to be her student, Jason Carvey. He and his roommate, Greg, were plotting to kill the Carpenter sisters, but Jason finds a disembodied Greg in his refrigerator just before he himself is killed by another Ghostface. Sam and Tara Carpenter are now living in New York City with friends, uh, Chad and Mindy Meeks Martin, uh, Mindy's girlfriend, Annika, Tara's roommate, Quinn, and Chad's roommate, Ethan. Tara is attending college, and Sam is working several jobs and attending therapy. Since the conclusion of Five Cream, an online conspiracy has circulated, claiming Sam is a serial killer and framed her boyfriend, Richie. Because of this, she's regularly accosted in public, Uh, Then Quinn's father, Detective Wayne Bailey, calls Sam. Uh, She needs to stop by the station for questioning because he found her ID at the Jason slash Greg 
uh, murder scene. He also found the ghost face mask used by Richie and Amber in five cream. Uh, Sam then receives a call by ghost face on Richie's phone who attacks her and her sister uh, and ends up killing multiple bystanders in a bodega at the police station. Kirby Reed from Four cream. Uh, she returns to the franchise as an FBI agent who takes a special interest in the recent ghost face murders. Gail Weathers also returns. We find she did end up writing a book about the five cream events, which angers Sam. Uh, she also mentions Sydney has gone into hiding and she's not in this movie. Uh, Ghostface then kills Sam's therapist and steals her file leaving the mask behind uh, used by Jill and Charlie and four cream Ghostface then attacks the squad at their apartment and kills Quinn, uh, her boy toy, Annika and um, Sam's boyfriend comes to the rescue. Danny, uh, he helps the others escape out of a window uh, with an extension ladder. Uh, Detective Bailey is taken off the case since his daughter was murdered, but he swears vengeance. Uh, Gail then takes the squad to an abandoned movie theater that is set up as a shrine to Ghostface killers with costumes, masks, murder weapons, various other memorabilia. Ghostface then attacks Gail at her apartment, killing her boyfriend and stabbing Gail. Sam and Tara show up in time to keep Ghostface from killing her. The group then plan to meet Kirby at the theater to trap Ghostface and execute him. On the subway, Mindy gets separated from the crew and stabbed in the stomach. At the theater, Sam has visions of her father, Billy, and continues to struggle with the idea she might enjoy murdering folks. Uh, she takes her dad's old knife for protection before realizing they've all been locked in. Detective Bailey calls and says Kirby was fired from the FBI months ago, and she is the Ghostface killer. Then Ghostface shows up and stabs Tara. Then a second Ghostface shows up and the two stab the shit out of Chad. Um, uh, Kirby and Bailey uh, roll up and Bailey ends up shooting Kirby, revealing himself as a third Ghostface. He coordinated the whole thing with his kids, Ethan and Quinn. Uh, turns out Quinn did not die. Uh, Sam and Tara fight off the Bailey family. Tara stabs Ethan in the mouth and Sam shoots Quinn. Sam wears her father's costume before taunting Detective Bailey and stabbing him to death. Um, in my moment of glory! Ethan pops up for one final scare where Kirby slams a TV into his head, killing him. Sam agrees to let Tara live her life and Tara agrees to go to therapy. Kirby, Mindy, and Chad are all taken to the hospital as Sam drops her dad's bloody ghost face mask in the street and walks off into the distance with her sister Tara. Roll them credits. There's also a really what? tiny little post credit sequence in this. Oh, is there? It's it's what goofy. It? It's somebody posted it on Slack. It's nothing. It's yeah. It's just um, it's uh, Mindy. Mindy showing up and she's saying like, not every movie needs a, a post credit sequence, and that's it. Well, she's speaking the truth there, anyway. Um, <laughs> yes. Whoa! Sure. Did I just rewatch Six Cream? Yeah, I think we hit every every. You beat. did. I was thorough. <laughs> um, I, you so were. there's this movie's getting a lot of positive. Bob, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got something important. I gotta say. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> I doubt that very much. <laughs> Rob was rearing to go. No, it's getting it's getting a lot of positive. Oh, oh positive reviews and there's a lot of like i think there's a lot of stuff to like in this movie i think there's also a lot of stuff to not like i will say like the the opening scene which scream is like pretty like famous for having these baller ass opening sequences i love this one i thought this movie started off with a bang. really yeah i was i was for it how you did loved it, it how did it hit disagree yeah. okay all right disagree yeah i i mean i i wouldn't say that it was like god awful or anything i appreciate what they were attempting to do the unmasking of ghost face right away is obviously a thing that they meant to have a good impact and it, and it hit me all right um i don't know i felt like I I liked by I liked the fu the way they closed it with uh, our one true ghost face of the scene saying who gives a fuck about movies yeah. that was a mm. turn that I was interested in saying yeah um but ult I felt like that promise was a little uh, underbaked by the end of things but yeah. for what it was that was fine I just kind of felt like it was a little I don't know it didn't it didn't thrill me the way that it did when we had like the all those multiple misleads in four we just watched last week and it just that was so peak to me i by comparison maybe this one kind of was mm. dull yeah so there were a couple interesting things that they set up and this this kind of actually so this intro kind of represents the movie for me in a lot of ways because i like the setup and the idea of you know a lot of these times well i guess it's kind of what happened in scream 2 
um, a little bit where <laughs> it's the kind of idea of like the public space, the public safety, like being somewhere, you know, like she's at a bar, she's not isolated in her home or anything like that. And so that kind of set up for like the setting and, you know, you're not going to be safe anywhere. Um, I, I like that idea. Um, but as soon as that dude took off his mask, like literally when he was like reaching to pull it off, I was like, this guy's going to get got. Like I, yeah. I was able to know where it was heading. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of this movie kind of goes that way where it's like, there's some really cool ideas and they're playing with the setting really well. And, you know, there, and then even, you know, like who gives a fuck about movies? Like there's this, like, you think there's going to be this core thesis that's going to be really intriguing, but ultimately mm -hmm. like, movie it, it really just comes down to some initial like s like setting scares or like using the setting really well for me but like the thesis doesn't ever like fully blossom like they, they don't actually yes. really have anything to say and i was able to just like n like guess where everything was headed a lot of the time like i didn't feel particularly surprised throughout this movie so this intro like really yeah right yeah, <laughs> yeah it really kind of set it up for me like for the whole movie really yeah i mean i i don't disagree with that i think this movie hints at a lot of really cool interesting new things they could do and it doesn't do any of them i think no. i think that it the intro actually does try some new stuff and that's the stuff that works the best with the the killer immediately showing his face i was like well what if they just totally re re like remove the whodunit from this that would be completely mm -hmm. fucking new and interesting and of course it turns out to be like another ghost face who's killing ghost face and so you're like okay well maybe there's like a good guy ghost face who's maybe trying to protect these girls but it's mm. fucking crazy yeah Extra they, don't, they don't do that, <laughs> that either and it's it it doesn't play out to mean much of anything and of course the who gives a fuck about movies line is, i was like fuck yes what what are they gonna do i kind of love that it yeah. feels like something mm -hmm. fresh and new and the intro to me is but the rest of the movie just is paint by numbers it's scream dude, that's the rehash. problem that is yeah exactly dude this movie is scream 2 and i know that they're doing this like like they did it with scream Five, where it was like paint by numbers scream one but we're subverting a few things and they're yeah. kind of doing that here but with the new setting it doesn't really like resonate the on the same level but it's the same fucking story and when he said who gives a fuck about movies my mind started splintering i was like yes where could this go like bob said i was like maybe there's maybe there's so maybe mm -hmm. like we talked about maybe there's a, a we speculated earlier uh, uh during the trailers that maybe this is like a cult formation yeah, or yeah. whatever. And that's maybe where this is going. Um, all that sort of thing. I, I, and I'm, so, I was still like har harboring some hope that there's going to be some like commentary, modern state of where people get scared, which would entail talking about true crime. I mentioned that last week. Mm, I had yeah. put a lot more eggs into that basket than I thought, because I was pretty disappointed that it did nothing of the sort. And the movie mm. basically is exactly scream Two: the victims, crazy parent and kids in this case, come back to exact revenge on the previous uh, boyfriend killer. It's the same story. And I don't, yeah, yeah. It, it does yeah. nothing for me. Like I understand repetition is part of it, but this movie, th this franchise when it's at its best is able to refresh within that construct. And this mm. didn't do that ultimately. Yeah. This, <laughs> well, I, I yeah. oh, go ahead. I was just to talk about the comparison to scream Two a little bit more like it scream Two also opens up like in a public setting, not in somebody's house yeah. with a big grand mm -hmm. murder. And then you go on to, you know, find the ending. Of course, the parent is the one that returns to be exacting revenge. It also ends in a theater like Scream 2 does. Mm -hmm. There's that mm -hmm. like sequence in, in the van where Randy, a core character, actually does yeah. get murdered. They do the van thing again in this one. And they reference it. Directly. They reference it. This, yeah. Th another thing that I'm sure we'll talk at length about is like the the meta commentary happening about like this is a franchise now. It's been a That's franchise for decades, which is silly. But like, but that means anybody's up for grabs. Anybody can die. And like in Scream Two, they do take out a pretty major player, Randy. In Scream Five, they kill off spoilers for Scream Five, I guess. They kill off um, Dewey and Judy, so some like major characters that have returned. And I was like, okay, 
<laughs> like we're gonna see some shit go down and some main characters get severely injured. Gale, you think is gone? Chad, you think they is gone? They don't even make Mindy. that promise work. And like everybody fucking lives. And at the very end of the movie, when they're loading people up in the ambulance, Mindy, who got stabbed twice, I think, in the stomach, is now released from the hospital, like on medication, fine, running through the streets. And she's like, Oh my god, we all survived. It's 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 a subversion within a subversion or whatever she's it's a twist within a twist and no. i was like that is not impactful. no that's a cop there's, out inside no of stakes. a movie there's that's no stakes that, well, at all yeah so i'm so i'm gonna say that watching this movie and like i, I don't want to like shit on it the whole time but um mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not gonna shit on it the whole time but i will say though not because of like the quality of this movie but because of the decisions that they make this actually kind of like makes me less uh makes me like five less in a way oh. because I really liked five and I rewatched it recently and liked it. And, but with this one as like setting the idea, the construct of setting up like a, a new trilogy within it or something like that, there was potential for five to set kind of like, wipe the slate clean and do a lot of creative things and i recognize that when you're doing this kind of like reboot sequel you almost need to do that and it what it really made me kind of think of was like star wars where it's like yeah you got to kind of like ground it back in there it's very similar and you know but you kind of got to like do it service while also saying okay these are the new characters we're going to move forward the problem is yeah, in six, they, they, sh- they're kind of showing that they have nothing to move forward to. That it's yeah. then, then it just becomes more of like seemingly like money grab because then it's like, you're not saying anything new. You're not mm-hmm. revitalizing this franchise. You're kind of just like milking it. And so in that way, it makes five seem less impactful because I'm like, you're literally just doing the same thing so that you can establish these characters that will never die apparently so that you can just keep milking it and milking it and milking it with nothing new to really offer it. And that sucks. It does suck. It doesn't impact my feeling towards five, but I agree with pretty much everything else you said. (laughs) It's just, I'm thinking this movie definitely has like middle movie syndrome. Because like you know, clearly they killed off some characters in, in part five, and they knew that this you know part five made so much money they they knew this was going to make a lot of money so like they just want to get them to the next one is kind of what it feels like to me. And like I don't like Gail the Gale scene where she gets stabbed and you know they fend off Ghostface and she has that like pretty impactful line like tell Sydney you know he never got me. I was like oh shit this is like a pretty intense like meaningful send off for Gail. It wouldn't be a bad way for her to go out. And then she just survives again. And it's just, yeah, the like under- she has a weak pulse. I was like, why? 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 Yeah. I don't really? understand. Like, and why did <laughs> she? So this doesn't make any fucking sense, man. Gail is pretty smart, and she like runs into that room. She locks the door. She has a phone. She has a gun. She's safe. Just call the cops. But then she opens the door and walks out and gets stabbed. Yeah. And still doesn't die, and her boyfriend dies, and she doesn't give a flying fuck about him, dude. Like, she does not care <laughs> dude, at all. Yeah. Can I, <laughs> yeah. Two things occur to me about Gale in this movie. Gale is kind of <laughs> given the raw deal, I think, in this movie, the same way Dewey was. Like, not again, like we talked about last week, I was not concerned with Dewey acting silly or doing the things he always does, or even yeah. getting killed. None of those things, in fact, that was good, and I think, for, his, for them to lose somebody like that. But in this one, like you, it's it's the characterization that this character not only is in every movie, but they cannot move forward. They're like always sunny characters. Yeah. They keep moving through, passing through time, but every lesson they learn just disappears before the next one. So <laughs> yeah. again, we start this movie with everybody hating Gale for tell, doing a tell-all book again, and I'm like, this person never learns a lesson. The, none of these people can like rise above and see the fucking pattern in front of them. They do well, nothing yeah. but talk about the patterns of their lives and self-reference but they can't figure that shit out well that's the thing that makes some of it like feel cheap like even going back to four or to five about you know who gail's supposed to be now you know Mm -hmm. or like the these lessons that she learns in four and and five and then yeah she just writes a book 
again. It just feels, I was willing to give it like the pass or five and I actually thought it was clever, but this is too much <laughs> to like make yeah. the same exact After the movie death of Dewey, again. That's where, like, too the, uh, much. She loved Dewey. Like that's yeah. that we can agree on. That was her arc. Every time was like, every time she would falter, Dewey would be like the, the, the person who would convince her to, change her ways again in yeah. some way or at least be a part of that conversation with her and he has her moral grounding thing yeah yeah her more exactly he's, he's her moral compass he is dead i understand that that could sense but like it's not just a stray she's like completely like lost like she's doing the same shit she did when she was fucking 20 years ago i don't literally i don't see yeah, literally shit. and just she, because yeah. it, it resonates with what people want to see on screen I don't want to see that for Gail. I want better for Gail than that. Well, they wrote in some like actual character development for her in part five, which was yeah. nice to see. And then they're just like, ah, fuck it. We'll, we'll just do the exact same shit. I think a lot of issues with this movie are just really, really based in the writing. And I, I wish it feels rushed mm-hmm. as shit to me. I wish they would have taken an extra six months and like do three or four more passes on the script or whatever. And then just have this Halloween movie come out for fucking Halloween, which would make a yeah. lot more sense. Like just it take, make take your sense. time with it. Clean it up. Cause they, they even hint at, I mean, we've touched on some of this already. They, hinted at a couple other ideas in here so they bring back kirby which is like you know a fan favorite character and she survived for and she's an interesting ass character and for she's very likable and she's an fbi agent in this movie which i feel like doesn't make a whole lot of sense for her character and my best guess is the only reason they made that choice for her character is to have another solid red herring because like they have all these murder weapons laying around in this big theater and like Obviously, like a cop has to be involved, right? We've got two police officers, Dermot Mulroney, and then there's an FBI agent, mm-hmm. Kirby. So, like, they even like hint at her being like twisted and fired from the FBI because she's gone crazy or whatever. It's just like a, yeah. a another red herring, and like it doesn't serve the character. It's just to like kind of fool the audience a little bit. It feels cheap, you know. To me. I I don't particularly. I'm not particularly bothered by her becoming a, a, an FBI agent. I am bothered by like it being a very, very, very painfully obvious red herring that, you know, it's like, this is clearly a fan favorite return. Literally, I was sitting sitting in the theater and I'm not kidding. Like every side of me I had, there was just this big group of gay dudes that were in a cup and a group together (laughs) that came in as couples and like it was, which is great or whatever. But like they, when Hayden Penetaire turned around cheering, all around me for Hayden Panettiere. That people fucking love this character. No way they're going to turn her into the killer. I just don't see it. And yeah. like, it, it. I hate that it's so painfully obvious. But also, I don't as a character. Like, she's gone through this thing. She's now a cop or whatever. They're clearly to me and having her have that rapport with Gail, setting her up as the Gail of the group of the survivor group is how I'm seeing it. They have. The they have three main three what I consider the core three the true core three at this point in my mind are her and then Jenna Ortega and uh, Sam Sam yeah yeah I think those are like our per- perennial survivors I don't think they're going to be able to keep um, Mindy and Chad another movie I just don't I don't think so yeah or maybe not both of them one of them think, but well yeah, that, yeah think that's so. That's the problem a lot with this movie too is like while I enjoy like some beats of it and like the I understand like the fan service we're on part six now and a, a lot of it came down to what felt like pandering to me and mm-hmm. it felt very cheesy and it felt like it like a huge disservice to the film because yeah. it you know even like you were saying like they were like oh we didn't die and this has already come up you know in the discussion of the slide where you're like yeah Dewey how many times did fucking Dewey get stabbed throughout the Scream series mm-hmm. before he had finally had to die in Scream 5 or a reboot sequel and, and stuff like that and it's like yeah dude six people were given the plot armor in this film six you have the core four which even like oh my even that felt like huge pandering it's like let's give us a name so it it can be referenced and like and then fucking kirby and gail six people cannot and, die in the scream franchise and you have <laughs> the, all you have are the, two under fleshed out characters who are obviously 
there for a reason. You have the yeah, Quinn, and then the killers uh, fake out too. Yeah, yeah. The people that die in this movie are people that you don't know shit about. Like at, you, mm-hmm. some of them you don't even know their names. Like Quinn's yeah, boyfriend, right. you don't even see him. You never see yeah. him. He's, you see yeah. him as a corpse only. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got. I know you got to have red shirts because it's a slasher movie, and you just got to have it. And I have no problem with that. But you got to have actual stakes in a slasher movie. Like your your main characters have to die eventually in a slasher movie, or else it's just all popcorn. And then like what what like rewatching this movie in those sequences even even if the sequence is like really well directed like that subway scene is fucking cool mm. i like it oh lot. dude i love that subway but scene if you rewatch it you know she's fine mindy is not gonna die there's no tension in that well, scene anymore at all it's i mean I, I still think it's there because that, i mean that's true of any movie you've seen multiple times if you know if somebody's gonna live or not i, I know i i personally do, like i really love the bodega scene too and i think yeah. the tension is there i think it's real because the idea of slasher films or horror films in general is being able to put yourself in that place you know you're on a subway car and surrounded by people in masks you're in a bodega where you know somebody's got like a shotgun how are you gonna get out and survive so i think i i disagree with you there i think the tension still exists yeah. but the pro but the problem is is like it's just you can't yeah it's like there's there's there are no stakes especially when that you've already announced a scream seven it's like why the fuck should i like care now when you're when you, like i care about the scream franchise because i feel like they always have something kind of potent to say about either filmmaking or society in general yeah, and ones. i'm and i'm always wondering like and the, the who done it aspects like what's going on when you water down or almost eliminate those aspects and you're just, you know, you're still making some cool scenes like from a slasher standpoint, but you're not like carrying on the franchise. And you might as well just be anything, a fucking Halloween or you're you're not doing it for the sake of like Scream can carry on. It, it feels like pandering. It feels like milking the franchise. It feels like money grubbing in some ways. And that just like kind of cheapens the experience no. for me. The the thing is, like they they learned the wrong lessons, I think, from four and five. the 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 thing that happened in, happens, especially in four and five, is a lot of self referential stuff, which makes sense for those because they're reopening the Pandora's box in both of those. Neither one of those were like necessarily designed as, you know, sequel sequels. They're like revival sequels in their own right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they're revisiting old set pieces and they're talking about the original cast and they're talking about like and they have even within that in five they have something to say about reboots and season and uh four they have something to say about reboots and this one they replace that entirely with like like none the franchise stuff is filler it doesn't mean anything it's not actually accurate in any way that matters and it doesn't have a, a strong theme it's one scene of exposition that ultimately does nothing and doesn't actually enlighten us on any any of the reasons mm-hmm. anything happens in this movie yeah. and instead they replace it with alt, like hyper self-referential stuff exclusively and it's that's when it feels like pandering, right? Yeah. It's, it's nothing but reminding you of how good you used to have it, basically. <laughs> There's, yeah, that scene where she runs down the rules feels pretty damn forced. So, like, the the meta aspect is definitely lacking in this movie. In some of the other Scream movies, they do a really good job at capturing some sort of social commentary as well, which this one tries its best to do, but feels pretty lacking in that as well. It definitely touches a I little bit. I don't even bit. see it. It's, it's kind of twofold. They kind of touch on two different things. One of them being like, you know, the assassination assassination of one's character Her online. character, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, they're spreading all yeah. these uh, oh, yeah, conspiracy yeah, that's theories and uh, she's being accosted in the street and they full on buy into it. Anybody you know? can make something up. And but then this what does second, it have to do with fucking franchises or anything? <laughs> nothing. The, the second aspect that I think they're trying to capture which randy you mentioned is like the the obsession with true crime and how like richie was collecting all this memorabilia from 
actual murders and not from like the stab movies. Like even though he was obsessed with the stab movies, he was making his own apparently, but like he's also obsessed with true crime now and he's collecting, you know, Billy and Stu's knives and shit like that. Well, that kind of, yeah, that kind of just rips off too in the same way too, because one of the core thesis, you know, it was the mob, but before that it was, what's that dude's name? Uh, Uh, Timothy Oliphant. Oh, well, yeah, Mickey. Yeah. yeah, Mickey, where he's like, I'm going to blame, you know, his blame yeah. violence on the movies or whatever. It's kind of that same thing where it's like, oh, you become obsessed with these killers and it's you're collecting. Fun. So now you're a killer. But even even if they, you wanted to set that up as a thing, I feel like they didn't even like kind of hammer that home. And even no. if they did, it would have been a rip off. No, yeah, <laughs> and I yeah, I, I don't see that as being commentary on the true crime thing either, Bob, like yeah. to, to your point, like. I just see that as the same story of like violent media affects kids. Yeah, right. Here comes Wes Craven originally to tell you why that's not true. And now here comes well, whoever directed this movie. I can't remember. I mean, and they're doing the same thing Wes Craven did. He's collecting literal murder weapons. And also there's that yeah. like random off offhanded thing that Gail says. Like it's all about limited, you know, true crime series or whatever. Yeah, you know? she does. But they, it doesn't go. The thing is like none of that stuff holds together. It's all very scattershot. I know. I know. If, <laughs> and if I don't, I don't I'm think good. it's so scattershot. Those two th- instances to me don't like even if th- if that's what it's intending to do, it failed so spectacularly that me, the person most wanting that to be the case, the point of the movie, the one who already like yeah. really and is salivating for that to be a point, yeah. didn't see it at all. The, mm-hmm. the, the line, like, who gives a fuck about movies, too? Like, they're more interested in the real so, life shit. God, that's it's, such an interesting line. It is, I know. There's, I don't know. We we can talk about some things that are good, like Juice. You mentioned that bodega yeah, that. scene. Some people so, have well, yeah. issue with the shotgun. I thought that's mm. I kind of do, but effective though. I liked it in context. I liked it better. Like it, it, in the in the trailer, I was like, I don't like that. This is like that. Their their version of subverting is by mm. you know doing a non creative kill, mm-hmm. but the tension is enough to where it's fine. So like ultimately, it yeah. worked out for me. <laughs> So another thing I wanted to kind of mention that sparked for me because it was a positive and it got me thinking. It's something I kind of mentioned in five where I still, even though I said this one like kind of cheapens five for me, it still holds true to me where I I think this is still, even with this movie, is still the best, most accomplished reboot sequel and one of the things that like really stood out for me i think i think this was a conscious choice the mass design in this is really cool and it's really gritty and it really really looks like the idea behind halloween 2018 and in that way again i still think like I think there's like some references to like, we're going to at least like, we're going to be the first ones to kind of do like it, even if it's not solid, we're going to be the best ones to give you a good reboot sequel trilogy or trilogy or whatever. And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of that is in reference to how poorly Halloween was ultimately handled. Um, And in that way, like I still would give it props because like, yeah, this isn't anything new or amazing for the Scream franchise, but in comparison to what else is coming out within the same set of rules or set of like, you know, we're rebooting it and we're bringing back these old characters. I still think this is better and i like the gritty mass design i like the grittiness of like the location the bodega in utilizing those like i love the still shots and the ideas like somebody else mentioned even though chad doesn't die the idea that we have these two ghost face killers with the double knives and standing next to each other and like the wiping of you know, they have some really cool just like that's a cool ghost face moment yeah. um cool throughout shots. this yeah some really cool shots and situations that like kind of like make you go like oh shit remember that ghost space time or like so yeah i did like the bodega scene i really like the subway scene i like the you know the kind of ladder scene or the the closed apart like close you know people are always running around the house they're running upstairs you know they're climbing out on the roof or whatever it's cool to have like this tiny little apartment there's fucking nowhere to go you're crawling out you know kind of fire escape not really but like th- those kind of ideas i thought that they utilized the yeah i thought they utilized the setting really well I didn't. I think that's love fair. That I, scene. I, I, um, really? No, it did. I like that better than any of the others. I didn't even yeah. care that much for the subway scene. It just personally. doesn't <laughs> make much sense to me. Like, 
after you find out that so Quinn's laying on the bed and then Danny looks across the way and sees Ghostface looming over her. But like at that point when you're watching the movie, you don't know that Quinn's also the just the other Ghostface. So like why mm-hmm. is Ghostface looming over her? It's really just for the audience's benefit and also so Danny can see and intervene. But like wouldn't they just close the blinds? Why do they why would they let him see? And then also like I don't think they were intending him fake, to see. But then they fake like a murder no, they- scene so he can take a picture and then he sends that to everybody else to alert them which doesn't make a lot of sense and then after that like her dad is able to take a corpse of someone that looks like his daughter up to the apartment and plan it so so that she can well no is that what happened i was very unclear about yeah he he says he found a corpse or does he just or i feel like he just told them he did he say did they show him or talk talk did he mention like i found a corpse and put it there yeah he did okay he said it was a fresh body (laughs) but no well no to kind of go against that a little bit i don't think it was necessarily just for the audience's benefit i mean if you play out what is happening so she's there they want so they they want everyone not and we're not mm-hmm. even talking about the boyfriend. They want to set up a scene where the daughter is killed. That was like that that was planned. So mm-hmm. they want the daughter to be killed one so she's not suspected so she has mm-hmm. easier access to things and stuff like that. So they want her to be killed. Then um they also want the the guy he it gives him more freedom because he's like taken off the case or whatever and it also drives attention away from him what man would kill his own daughter or whatever and so the brother is in there they have to set this whole scene up they kill her boyfriend so he has killed her boyfriend Mm -hmm. in the thing she's not going to be in there helping him she doesn't want anyone to think that she's a part of it even if her roommates accidentally come in or something like that so Mm -hmm. killed in the bathroom he needs to like pretend kill her and then kill it. So I like I'm, that doesn't really. Yeah, I don't I, think I, that's for the you. audience's benefit. It's, it's, I don't think so. I think ridiculously I don't think that they elaborate want, and does not, it just doesn't. Well, all of it. Well, that's I, I mean that's, that's kind of true of most of these things. <laughs> yeah, but, um, they're not staging <laughs> murders for people to see and then find yes, out. Well, they do. To, Literally, they do that's that shit what they all do. the time. <laughs> Stu With, got stabbed as a part of staging murders. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't know. The, the corpse being involved is just, I don't know. It doesn't make... The corpse is too much. I'll give you the corpse because I think that the dad... like I thought that he just came out and was like, oh, I can't believe my daughter's dead. And they just took him at his word because he's a mm, cop that just came out of the yeah. crime scene and is freaking out. Yeah, But, but I, also, like, like, I don't think that the assigned... boyfriend was supposed to see that stuff. Well, I don't think that that was supposed that, to happen. Sure, that makes sense, but he doesn't. He's the only reason anybody survives. It also doesn't make sense that the dad would be assigned to the case there's a direct conflict of interest there also like why would the fbi like kirby assuming that she didn't get fired why would they let her investigate anything there's a direct conflict of interest there too it just doesn't make a lot of sense well Well, she's not directly involved with with any of these specific people except for maybe gail and she's uh, yeah and also like i mean they're leaving old masks that the killers wore when they stabbed her like I mean, you know, she's involved. But she's not That's officially it's, a part of the FBI, though. What? I mean, yes, that was a lie. Yeah, that was a lie. That was that a lie. Maroney told. Oh, Dermot. it was. Oh, no, okay. She says I, herself, she's she has a badge. She says she's from no, 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 no. I'm saying that Dermot Maroney lied about her being taken off the force. I thought that was true. I thought that was true. That's true. He's trying to cast that because that's right at the end where he's trying to buy, trying to turn them against each other. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's all a little confusing. And the thing is, like any any of the screen movies, if you try and break down who is where, it starts to get really kind of thorny. So, like, it, it, yeah. I'm not too bothered like by we that. We talked as about as last s- time about like who was killing Dewey. It's like, yeah, yeah I right. Mean, when yeah. You a s- little girl. I mean, but I feel Dewey, like, I guess, yeah, that's pretty consistent sense, with a lot of the scream setups, which, you yeah. know, that's not the wor- that's definitely not the worst part for me. I can see the critique, but I also yeah. feel like that's kind of part of the scream and easy to wash over me. But not to say that this isn't without critique. Critique. There's pr- plenty of critique yeah. to give. <laughs> yeah. When it, when you start like planting bodies on cr- uh, crime scenes where there are multiple cops of it around though that aren't yeah. involved, I, then I start to be a little concerned. But like as far as I, I don't know, I, a lot of kayfabe goes into some of that stuff, and that's yeah. fine. But like as far as you, 
as far as that actual scene of them like crawling across the escape ladder or whatever, I thought that was great. <laughs> I was pretty like that was one of the more tensiony moments for me. Um, and honestly, like like the subway scene was fine to me. Like it, it was fine. I, I don't, I don't know, man. Like the amount that they put into how many days of Halloween are in New York? I mean, Jesus Christ. Like that's even if well, you're going to agree that everybody in the world who lives in New York is always dressed up in horror garb on Halloween. Um, even if you accept that there's like three days of Halloween in this movie. I will say to be fair though, living in soul, at least this is the soul experience. So living in Seoul, like if like last year, I think Halloween was on a Sunday or something. And this is mm-hmm. typically how it is. There's events going on Thursday, definitely Thursday night, Friday night and Saturday night. And that's three days. So to be fair, like that's that's how it is to, here. to that level with that many people. Well, not to that up? level because it's Asia. But and it's so it's not like you know, it's, know. it's more I'm regulated. Current, yeah, like, I don't. I, I heard at least one person from New York say that it, that's that was that was pretty overblown. Not okay. the amount of days, but the amount of people dressed up in a subway. Car well, okay, masks. the yeah, amount. Like, so ninety yeah. percent of the people wearing masks. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I feel well. So to be fair, if it were so, if you were to go to like the foreign area where like a lot of people go for Halloween, then on Thursday night there would be a lot of people in the streets and in cabs mm-hmm. and stuff dressed up. Friday night there would be a lot of people, and Saturday night definitely. So. Uh, well, in some whatever. ways, uh, probably to me, not it, to the extent that this movie portrays it, where like literally everybody on a subway car is dressed up, but they are living like near a campus. So like there could be a lot more young people. Like, yeah, I don't but that's know. not even like the, the totality of what that that scene didn't land perfectly for me because I, I just I don't know. It was very it, it didn't leave me feeling a lot of tension. I just I, I yeah. really didn't feel like Mindy was going to get got. And when mm. she they she was stabbed like like enough times to where she should be dead, and they treated her like yeah. she was dead for a minute, for a minute. Sure. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. well, sure. But like, I, well, here's I don't the know. problem with that too. Mindy gets stabbed on the subway. Okay, multiple times. Yes, multiple times. Mm-hmm. The only person who's there to support her and help her and save her is a ghost face. Yeah. It's just mm-hmm. red herring bullshit, man. Why did she survive? She should not be alive. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's just to fool the audience. It's I know. Lazy yeah, writing. that's cheap. That's, like, that's the cheap aspect. Honestly, of it. though that doesn't make sense either because obviously like it, it, for some reason her getting stabbed by a ghost face with the only person she knows that is part of their suspect pool being there too is 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 a ghost face like it, like, yeah. like, why would they not? Why would she not be more suspicious of him once she lost eyeline of this guy? Then get stabbed. Then he comes and rescues. But I don't her? think like, it was. I don't more? think it was him. I think it was his sister. Yeah, and that's kind of the reveal of that there was three people. Yeah, but they, they. If that was the case, then I don't understand why there was like this special attention paid to showing distance between them and like getting him out of the picture. It seems like it's more susp- like if I was in Mindy's position, I uh, at, as soon as that happened, I would be like, "Don't you ever come near me again." even more so than before because he's the only person that she thinks is alive and are and is physically in the same zone as her that could have committed this crime on her like why would she not be more suspicious i don't know we really don't she see her with the after only person that that. until she shows up after everything goes down and she's like oh you're all alive yeah that's so, like, a thing we really don't get yeah, much I'm all time yeah but her. she but she doesn't no she like he he pulls her out of the train and she's like she's like oh i guessed wrong again talking oh, to the yeah. fucking ghost face killer and well, i'm like here's he would have to put on a costume, <laughs> stab her, take the costume off, and then go back and grab her and pull her off the train. I guess that's a lot to manage, I would think. But. I mean, also somebody too, stabbed her on the train and nobody noticed. So that goes against the whole st- thing they're setting she up. She got stabbed many times. How is she going to, like, what, go to a hospital, get patched and up, and make it to the she theater? Would, yeah. she would. <laughs> She's going to Uber? I think like, we, what is this? We need to talk about the ending. We haven't really touched much on that. The worst part. I, I think. Yeah, dude. Mm, so, like, again. I, the idea of the three killers is neat, and I think the set piece of the theater with all the memorabilia and stuff is also neat i think they spend way too much time in that place you get kind of bored of it dude dermot mulrooney showing up and like doing like the whole family the whole family is crazy like why can't they just be out for revenge they don't all have to act like fucking Stu and billy it doesn't make sense and dermot mulrooney is not selling it 
He's not. None no, of them are. He's really, he's really not. not. He's he he really was bad. I like that guy <laughs> in other things. Me too. And, yeah. And this, he's like, he's either he's whew, one end of the spectrum or the other. There is no middle ground. And I kind of get why he was probably directed to do that. And it's because of Stu and Billy. That's like, the thing. I think it was a directing problem. He has, to, he has problem. a checkpoint to hit. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a. It's I not think a it was definitely a directing problem. Yeah. And then, uh, God, the pandering. Like the killing him with the TV and the, yeah. Mm -hmm. And making them act like that. I just like, can't help but be like lose yeah. faith in these guys for a couple reasons. One, you rushed this the fuck out. Even when we were saying last year, we we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Even I who loved five, absolutely loved it. I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, like one year later, you're going to crank this thing out. And the problem with that is, it's like, if they had nailed it, I would have given them all the praise, like, holy shit. But like, when you flub like this, it's like, Oh, like it looks like 10 times worse because it then it all feels like a money grab because then like I know they were Just directing like him to act that way. Like yeah. I know they were at me, you know, and like, oh, the TV, even uh, the the little scene between Kirby and Mindy um, doing like the whore yeah. trivia. Yeah. I was like, oh, my. And, then even, and the lines of like, we're a family. I was like, is this the fucking fast and furious? I was like, what is <laughs> happening? No, right because now? They're drinking, those uh... are all director's choices. <laughs> and that's, that's the worst kind of part about this. If, it's like, ugh, if that guy had just given a bad performance, I could have been like, uh, you know, that kind of sucks. But he, he was made to do that. <laughs> if, uh, if I don't this, know, it was dumb. If, if this was Fast and the Furious, they drink Corona and not Coors Light. That's an important. Did you? <laughs> Coors Light is all over this fucking the sponsors. Movie, very different. Yeah. Danny was, was yeah. ironing a T-shirt and drinking a Coors Light at the same time. Who does that? Yeah. Everybody's carrying Coors Light around. That's the way it goes. Um, so yeah, the end of the movie though too also brings back the worst part of Scream Five for me, which is Force Ghost Billy. Dude comes mm. back. I know that there are people that like seeing Skeet again and power to you, but I hate it. I hate it as a plot device. I hate that they introduced fucking psychotic dreaming into the canon of Scream. It just, oh God, whatever little grounding to reality just slipped completely away when they did that. And they brought it back. They brought it the fuck <laughs> yeah. back. We don't, it's not being psychotic. Isn't like an inheritable trait. Is it? I don't think Apparently it, is. it is like in this not, fucking movie because being a, Sam, not just a psychotic, but like a murderer also <laughs> Sam got it. And then also Dermot Mulroney, all three of his kids got some crazy from him. Apparently it's, it is definitely hereditary in the fucking scream universe. I, I really I dislike man. this whole, like is Sam a, a psycho killer? Is she's not a psycho killer. Cause like, one is just not of interesting and of course she's fucking not exactly of course she's not she wouldn't be our main character if she is and they're obviously mm -hmm. not bold enough to take a swing that big in the next movie to just make her fucking ghost face yeah That'll never fucking happen so like at the end of this movie where her and Mulroney like run full force into each other and fall off the balcony the movie cuts to black for a second and then zooms in on Mulroney's eyes and he like wakes up mm -hmm. so, as if he was knocked out for a minute or whatever and instead of her just like, you know, stabbing him when he's knocked out or probably taking the handcuffs nope. that I'm sure he has because he's a police officer <laughs> or Kirby's handcuffs, handcuffing him, tying him up, something. She runs off and takes her dad's ghost face outfit and puts that on and then hides and lets him shoot his gun several times at her and her friends. And then she jumps out and stabs him because we have to have her maybe be a serial killer for some reason. It's just doesn't make sense and it's not interesting she stabs him like 35 times and then turns and looks at jenna ortega and she's like i don't need to and stab you anymore also, but i'm gonna anyway yeah she stabs him in the eye which is a great kill i don't like it but it's a great kill but well also like why is jenna ortega all of a sudden jizzing when she's murdering Eth the ethan character she stabs him in the mouth and is like so stoked about it like she she's not even related to skeet what's happening <laughs> Yeah, I the, don't this, know, this man. whole the ending was other than there being like three ghost face killers and there being like one or two like cool, like still moments, you know? Yeah, it, it was like a big bust for me. Um, the acting was really bad. Yeah, you're right. The motivations. It, it just feels like spectacle for spectacle sake. It doesn't so it's retread on retread on retread. Yeah. And like it's retread like even even the 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 
the spoilers themselves are, are retreads, not subversions, direct yeah, retreads of previous movies. Are. And that's that's something that I expect more from the free scream franchise than to do that. Find yeah. a way to subvert it. Talk about some, uh, some other aspect of horror media or other media that's adjacent. <laughs> Talk about fucking anything besides the same thing you've are one thing you're not supposed to do because that's what like this fr- whole franchise is at its best when it's tackling some new, interesting thought. And that's, and honestly, I don't think it's that hard to do with the pieces that are already in place. I honestly, agree. like even with the whole idea of, you know, we started these rumors online, you know, mm-hmm. we're feeding this idea so that other people attack them. Yeah. It, it almost would have been more interesting if they weren't the ghost based killers at all and they were just feeding like information or oh, feeding yeah. these rumors so that people, other people were taking it upon themselves That'd to dress so as ghost based to like attack and kill them. people. Like, well, yeah. that, that's already kind of happening. That's why I thought like the opening, <laughs> yeah. like with with Flash Thompson getting killed, is like, yeah. oh, there's multiple like factions of ghost faces. Sure. Maybe yeah. there's like a cult. Maybe there's like, maybe there's some commentary about group think where everybody, yeah. like, a, a group of people. People yeah. online, a bunch of incel motherfuckers like Stu and Billy, but found each <laughs> other online. And these guys are just like feeding them and then ultimately even surviving Dermot Mulroney's little clique yeah. of killers. They walk outside and there's just like a fucking half dozen, six dozen ghost face killers surrounding <laughs> them in an alleyway. Like, do something, man. Dope. Do something yeah, with that, that information. Would be cool, yeah. Also, like, <laughs> them dropping the old ghost face masks at all the murder scenes, I thought was a cool idea because they, they even say, like, oh, they're leading us back to the original. It's got to be tied yeah. to the original in some way. And that just doesn't really mean anything. Matter. Yeah, all. they're like, they're counting down. And then they were like, we're counting down to this, to us killing you. It's like, why? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was just another red they're herring framing her. making us think. Oh, perhaps, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Perhaps do. Yeah. I mean, because they, she's the, her dad's the original. Guy. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think they were framing her as being like the secret killer of everybody How the because fuck that's would she get those masks. I don't know. It just doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't make much sense to me. No, I mean, it does. Sense not. isn't always like first and foremost also, in, these movies yeah. in terms of like logical yeah. sense, but at least thematic sense is is usually made I'll and it's not that, happening yeah. in this movie. also they too they make it seem like uh the killer from five the the brother or whatever yeah. that he's been collecting these things like his whole life or at least at a certain point which means that his dad has been helping him like steal evidence since he was a teenager presumably yeah. and when there were a bunch of murders and this kid was found to be a murderer in Woodsboro, nobody thought like, where's this evidence? <laughs> Dude, right? Also, like, in fairness, <laughs> evidence goes <laughs> evidence. In, in yeah, but like evidence for safe. all five like, screen killers. No, I mean, I hear you. Just I hear gone. you. <laughs> Literally it's a, it's a everything is gone. Yeah. Also, <laughs> yeah. If, if Kirby is working for the FBI and she has been following these recent murder cases and has a, an interest in them, like how would she not know who Rich's family is at all? It, like, she yeah. just wouldn't know any of that or like where he actually came from New York and not from wherever the fuck he was pretending to be. From. Yeah. yeah. What was she investigating? She said, I've been tracking their movements online. What else have you been doing though? Because <laughs> yeah. if you're actually investigating these things and you're obsessed with it or whatever, I would think you would want to go check out at least a little bit of the evidence, which ding is suddenly missing. Gail so, finds the warehouse. Like the FBI. Yeah, we don't, do we get any information on it? how that's done? They just say, I'm good at my job and yeah, they write it off as a girl boss moment. They were like using an <laughs> alias. Or, I don't forget. It doesn't fucking matter. She found it. Oof, she oof. found it. Um, we just don't we know. Turned into, we turned our, our positive points into complaining. We yeah. did. <laughs> we're like the opposite of Midas. <laughs> There was so I will say I I dug that this was set during Halloween even if the the, the number of costumes was unbelievable. There's a lot of like really great references. There is a uh, the girl from Ready or Not. Um, there's a Babadook, mm-hmm. and my favorite was actually Ethan's costume. Murder party. Murder party. Yeah, I I was like, there's there's murder party. I was psyched that that got play, and then yeah. it really pissed me off later when they had the Mindy and. Uh, uh, Hayden Penitier, whatever uh, character's Kirby. name is, when they have their back and forth and they're talking about like comparatively baseline horror movies. I'm like, oh my man, God, you dude. just you made a horror, you made a murder party reference in your movie. You can't. And these two are supposed <laughs> yeah. to be the experts. Go a little deeper. 
I did like the murder what's your party favorite reference. Halloween movie. I wrote a note whatever. on that. I was like, oh shit, oh shit, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, that's he, a deep pull. That's way different than having is. fucking Pinhead. Yeah, they, if, and, they have fucking like horror podcast posters on the wall and shit. But when they actually sit down and have the prerequisite comparing horror notes m- moment, they talk about what was it like. What's your favorite chainsaw? Check this chainsaw movie or whatever it was. Nightmare, I can't remember now, Friday the 13th. Nightmare. They talk yeah, about like Psycho the, 2. The baseline horror f- franchise. Psycho 2 is underrated. Candy oh, Man. shit, though. Did y'all see the fucking in um in the roommate's the po- uh, r- room? She had the straight chilling sticker. I did. Uh, did I saw that. that oh, my God. <laughs> right, ne- right next to a Cooter Club sticker. Oh, yeah. Oh that's why, dude. Oh. If there's a Cooter Club sticker in oh, 7, yeah. then... <laughs> they also something they were kind of hinting at at the beginning where like they were they were talking about Jalos a lot. I was mm. like, you know, what if they took Ghostface and had like a couple like classic Jala moments where you get like POV and you see like him wearing leather gloves with a knife following. I mean, why not? Around. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like, there's yeah. there's so many cool things that they kind of hint at and play with. Even if they just would have full on pandered and brought fucking Stu Mocker back and he was the killer, that would have been more exciting than what we got. It, yeah, that's the thing. It's yeah. like I didn't see the end coming. I didn't see Dermot Mulroney being the killer because it was too fucking obvious. Yeah. Like yeah. I actively convinced myself that couldn't be. I thought for sure he was a red herring because why the like and, and the and the brother like the girl I completely bought as being dead. I didn't think about it that way, but the rest of them I was like, no. I mean, obviously they're po- pointing at Dermot here. Obviously they're pointing at Meek Kid also. There's there's got to be some other subversion, and there just wasn't. Like, dude, they that uh, sucks. They kind of not really sneakily threw in the uh the incel insult there i mean clearly oh, the yeah. killer Dying was virgin. a virgin <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> randy we all know you loved that scene she got you know stabbed him in the mouth and <laughs> said die a virgin and then she mm-hmm. creamed apparently mm-hmm. oh i'd enjoy going to the weenie roast very much <laughs> <laughs> uh, i bet you did right. um uh yeah i just <laughs> Uh, and also, too, the problem is now they can't really bring Stu back because that no. would be some pandering bullshit because them saying, like, if you believe he's dead yeah, and that's yeah. a TV that killed Stu and like all that stuff. It's like you guys are going too damn hard. <laughs> like you are going way too hard on this shit. I feel like this movie was written by a message board. Like, I don't think <laughs> it was like. I, it, it seems like they just didn't go uh, they didn't go hard enough and they pandered but uh, I don't know it, it, there's it feels a, it feels a little bit like the same yeah point. again yeah, the same yeah. thing it kind of feels like the problem with Halloween to David Gordon Green version or whatever kills. um kills kills thank you god damn it's getting confusing but um it kind of feels like that where it's like look here's fucking Miriam chambers and here's this mm-hmm. person and and here's the the fucking guy and he's gonna say everyone's the entitled to guy. a good scare it's just yeah. like here's the we've seen guy. the movies we've seen them like we don't need to see them again with these lines we don't need to say like hey that's the TV they killed Stu and like all the, it's like guys <laughs> you know what? do something I can handle forget, it. I can did ha- you forget how to write a movie like I, there's like, no I have a high tolerance here. for that with a screen <laughs> yeah. movie and this well exceeded that oh like, yeah oh, that's yeah. the problem is like like there's like there's good reason for the uh, this particular franchise to be meta textual great reason for it but that's the only trick and they trick do that trick the entire fucking movie it's too much and it has no substance and that's the real mm-hmm. issue. All right, let's yeah, we are we're just rating it now. Let's go yeah. ahead and wrap up. <laughs> uh any final thoughts and of course uh, out of 5, what are you going to rate? Uh Scream 6 Juice oh, why, we didn't, why, don't, no. why don't you kick us off? Save it for your your final thoughts, Randy. Yeah. I'm going to Oh man, I took a lot of um a note. So I'm going to breeze through them. Guy takes his mask off at the beginning. Thought it could be a, a subversion, but I also was like, this guy's about to die. And then he did. And then I was like, oh, it's not going to be a subversion. And then that kind of like left me a little worried. Um, watching Friday the 13th. Uh, she wasn't human. In- oh, another thing they kind of bring up, like when he's talking, he's like, she wasn't a human anymore, just an animal. And I was like, okay, maybe they'll explore that in some kind of way. I wasn't like particularly excited about that, but I thought that that could, and then they did it. Um, 
C minus on the Jalo paper. No Jalo ever comes up again. Um, I did like the gritty mask. Um, uh, who gives a fuck about movies? I was like, oh, hopefully that's going to be cool. Nope. Um, <laughs> spying on the guys through the window and somehow like that's okay. That was a weird moment for me too. Right after they're doing the whole thing of like, I put a knife in her and it was, she was like an animal. And then there was this clear like connection to, you know, like treating people as things. Then like the girls are just staring on this guy through the window and it's like all cool and chill. And I was like, well, that's weird. So I didn't like that. Um sequel in college just like scream 2 at the at that time i thought it was cute at the end did not um <laughs> cardboard night from fucking murder party love that shit jenna ortega absolutely adorable i know she's like getting a lot of play and stuff right now but i i still like i think she does a good job in this and she's in um, everything she's, she's good yeah and she's adorable um Bodega scene, awesome. Ghostface with a shotgun, love that shit. Looks like the mask from Halloween. Ghostface with a shotgun would be a great alternate title to this movie. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Give me that. Yeah, if they like went hard on that, that would be totally fine. Um, Kirby FBI, too cheesy. Even at the bit, like when she showed up as FBI, I was like, nah. Um, stab through the door scene, another one. Um, red right hand, they brought it back. I'm going to die a virgin in cell. Um, Annika ladder kill scene, solid. I like that whole scene. Um, you fuck with my family, you die. Woof. Um, the movie theater setting, really cool. Um, horror trivia between Kirby and Mindy. Woof. Dewey theme, a little scotch, like that. <laughs> um, they wait. Oh, I didn't like this either. We didn't bring it up. The way they talk about Ghostface, like it's the same person, really bothers me. They're like, what's your motivation this time? Or what's your motivation now? It's like, yeah. this has been like 12 different people. What do you, th- it's just not the same y'all treat it like it's the same person it's clearly not i like oh you failed many times before it's like this is not the same person it's never has been the same person so you can like that (laughs) semantically change that around and it's fine yeah um the picture dewey had in his house uh was in gail's house i thought that was kind of sweet um She's more sad over Gail. Like her weeping over Gail didn't really make sense to me because she didn't really know Gail that much and didn't really like Gail that much. So I don't know. Um, we're family, fast and furious, subway scene, amazing. Um, I thought they were gonna do the whole you stole the franchise from me with Kirby being the killer. Like, oh, I was the first survivor. I should it should be mine or something. They didn't. Uh the three killers was cool and I like the scenes with them, but the whole acting uh that they do with that rip off of scream two with the family legacy doesn't always have to be a bad thing yes apparently it does unfortunately um this this movie was fun um but the the ending really whiffed it for me um and really kind of cheapens like this little trilogy they got going on now um they'd really have to do i feel like we said this again in halloween they really have to do something really amazing with the third one to like pull it all off i think they can kind of like coast and still just be like fun and okay but ultimately disappointing still better than halloween but they're losing ground they're definitely losing ground a little bit um Overall, I'll give it a 2.5, um, you know, for the visual. I would watch, I would throw on like, see, I don't really want to watch this from beginning to end, but I would throw on scenes of this, like the Halloween setting is cool. And like pretty much like the, the, you know, like the first two thirds are like really fun to just watch and just to have on for kills and tension and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it's 2.5 for me. It's just like middling. This is kind of what I thought about originally Halloween 2018. It's like, ah, you know, there's, some okay scenes it's cool to see this like killer in this setting but like ultimately not really for me story-wise so 2.5 from soju bob out of five where are you gonna put six cream hey um i think at best this movie is just sort of like a somewhat effective slasher movie it does not do the scream franchise justice um, it's got a decent body count in it. So like if you're just showing up to watch people die and that's it, like you do get that. I think there's about like 15 deaths, but like strangely enough, four or even five, depending on how you look at it, are killers. And then the rest of the people that die, we just do not know anything about at all. 
Um, so there's no stakes, but you get the body count. Um, the commentary as far as, uh, like the social commentary is kind of there. It's really loose. Um, the meta aspect is kind of there, but it's also really loose. So like, you're not getting that like scream goodness that you really want or that I really want out of a scream movie. It's just kind of failing in a lot of different places for me. Um, there's again, hardly any comedy in this, which is a problem I had in the fifth one. It takes itself like way too self. It's too self serious. And that is that tone is definitely carried over in this one. There's sort of this like forced conflict between the Carpenter sisters where like Tara needs to be left alone to fuck strange guys. And like Sam is too overprotective and it just doesn't feel very natural. And then she's, Sam's dating this Danny guy and we don't really know anything about him, but like, I feel like he's kind of overacting a little bit and that feels forced as well. And Tara, her romance, um, with Chad also feels kind of rushed and forced for me. Like all of the dramatic aspects just feel kind of underbaked. Did they, um, did they ever do any hinting towards Chad and Jenna Ortega's character before yeah, in they, five? Oh, not, I don't think. In no, five. cause he had a girlfriend that dies. Died, okay. In five. I, yeah. I, I haven't seen that one more recently. So yeah, I, I think sure. it's, yeah, Go it just ahead, starts though. in this movie. It felt kind of just generally underbaked ac- across the board. Um, they go back to scream Two and rehash a lot of that stuff. Um, I thought the the opening was really interesting and felt fresh, and they were definitely doing things with a Scream movie that we'd never seen done in a Scream movie before. Got me pretty stoked for the movie. In the middle, it just felt um, like it's like it lost its footing a bit. Its pacing felt kind of slow. The bodega set piece is really dope. I like that a lot, and the subway worked for me as well. Um, but then the ending came around, and they did not stick the landing. And the landing was by far the worst part of the movie, for sure. The killer reveal was so underwhelming and poorly acted and poorly written. We don't know fucking anything about these people other than they're related to Richie. Like, like you can't tell me a single thing about Ethan other than he's in an <laughs> econ class, allegedly. And Quinn likes to fuck a lot of dudes. And, like, that's all we know. Dermot Mulroney is a creepy cop, I guess. Like, we don't... No shit. We don't know fucking anything about him. It's uh, it's just not particularly good. Um, there's, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I guess uh, we've radio kinda... silence is not writing us into uh, Scream Seven. I know. Yeah, yeah that that's actually. Fine. I wonder if that's part of the play. <laughs> I wonder if it's like yeah, that's fine. You know, if they're they're greasing some wheels by putting their posters up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe Got to grease yeah. the unions, eh, boys? Buying, uh, yeah, buying some goodwill there. The <laughs> the apartment scene just didn't really work for me. The the setup of it and like ultimately what happens when we find out Quinn is somehow still fucking alive doesn't work for me. I really, really wish they would give up on Sam potentially being a serial killer just because her dad was and the ghost Billy doesn't work. It didn't work for me in five either. Uh, it's just not fun. It's not fun and it's poorly executed. I don't care for it too much. Um, other than a few like pretty cool set pieces and a few decent kills, that's I think that's all that we re- really have going on here. Plus a half star for being clearly sponsored by Coors Light. I'll, <laughs> g- I'll give them that. Um, the soundtrack was pretty cool. They did bring back Red Rat Hand, which is always fun. Um, they had a horrible, nice. horrible Crows track on there, which was dope. Um, they had some, d- some decent jams for sure. Um, I don't know. I think ultimately I'm going to come in with a two and a half on this as well. Um, Randy, how do you feel? Well, I will disagree with you on one thing um, in particular, which is that it's no fun. That's like the best compliment I have for this movie is that it has a lot of fun things in it. Uh, as much as I would expect from even the worst scream movie. Um, so like th- that's one thing that I, as much as many critiques as I've given, like the feeling I had in the theater, I had a good time. Like I was, I was ultimately enjoying myself. And if that's your bear, if that's your barometer for whether or not it's a good movie, then I would say it's not that bad of a movie, but like I'm thinking more critically about it. Like I tend to, it's just doesn't hold together well. And I agree with most of both of your complaints. Um, a few things, one thing that I, we didn't touch on that I think we really, that I really wanted to 
mention because it's central to this movie is the sister relationship, which starts out kind of like I see like I can understand a pathos that's happening between these two characters. That's fine. But the way they like oversell it in the end, it just adds more cheese to the end. Let me where go. It's like, you got to let me go. And then it's like, it's just, there's no one major quip at the end of the movie. Like there are in the, that I can remember from the, uh, th- that are in like all the other screen movies, like not in my movie. Mm. Uh, <laughs> don't mess with the original, those sorts of things. There's no one of those. There's like 12 half, <laughs> formed kind of quips like you gotta let me go or like like but then again i do <laughs> don't want to see you whatever she says and when she decides to kill Derm- dermot moroni after all yeah. i can't even remember it's weak <laughs> that's what i'm saying um and it ult- ultimately that relationship ends up feeling a little bit weak in the end because it, it just gets mixed up with even more cheese and it becomes a fucking fondue pot at the end of this movie um I could see Kirby as an FBI agent maybe, but I think maybe it would have been cooler and more uh, like horror referential if she was an FBI trainee or something from the Academy that found out about this and wants to help out that puts her in um, silence of the lambs area, you know, like you could do some shit with that, but no, she's just kind of full scale FBI that nobody really checks up on except for, Dermot, who's trying to destroy her. Um, the Gale situation in this movie entirely sucks. Uh, like, without Sydney as sort of like there or Dewey, she's kind of left adrift and they don't know what to do with her except what's been done a hundred times before. And it does not service her character well. It doesn't make me doesn't make me feel good for the Gale character that she cannot, you know, function with the lessons that she has learned time and time again. It makes me feel sad for her. Um, uh, She also doesn't care at all about her boyfriend, which is a damn shame. Um, She learned nothing from, from I don't even know if that was her boyfriend to be there. Well, just getting some dick. Whoever she's living with to have a year of Dewey's Dewey's death to, to even just like, you know, yeah you could argue she's in fight or flight but i just like ultimately like the, the fact that like she put herself in the position that, that this movie writes her in the position of being at odds with everybody so she uh-huh. has to like bad bitch her way through she can be that bad bitch with people respecting <laughs> her like she can do that you don't have to like write like have the new people that don't know her and know what she's capable of be the doubters. Have the the whatever like um if I never Trudy heard the, type hear characters. the term bad bitch again, I would be okay. <laughs> yeah, I understand that feeling entirely. Um Yeah, okay. And force Good goes force goes Billy, like it was it was the worst part of part five. It's one of the worst parts of this one, but it has a lot more competition in this one, which is how I know this is a much worse movie. Um Let's see. The, the museum and theater was an overused set piece. They took the punch out of it. It was a shame. Um, I wanted there to be something more at the core of this. I think, Rob, maybe you did point to some things that where they were like, they were like just sort of gesturing towards a few things. Yeah. And this movie franchise, for as much as it does go to that, go to the social construct, social commentary well, it never goes like hyper overt with it for the most part, at least not when it's doing it. But I think it like, it definitely clearly outlines what it's doing, but it, and it informs some of the character stuff, but it doesn't detract from the fun of the movie. This just doesn't have that. It's like a hollow space where that should be. And it Mm -hmm. feels like the kills suffer for it. But ultimately I enjoyed it as a slasher movie to what you were saying, Bob, I enjoyed it just like strictly as, as it's good for a slasher movie. It's bad for a scream sequel. That's my feeling towards it, I think. And because of that, I'm going to give it a 2.5. Yeah. Whoa. Boys are united. Whoa. I did Feels not. good when we're all on the same side, huh, boys? Hmm? Oh, my God. So plump. So right. So right. The we can stand united. <laughs> it's a rare day. It's a rare day. It is a rare day. <laughs> when all Bob right. and Juice are on the same side, we're unstoppable, baby. Here we go. It's true. <laughs> Try and stop this show. You just can't. Um, all right. Yeah, well, that's aggregate. what a boy like. Aggregates, obviously, a 2.5 from the Straight Chilling crew. Let's jump over into Rotten Tomatoes and see what the critics and users say about Six Cream. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Rotten Tomatoes segment in which we're going to give these two gentlemen the chance to guess within the best of their abilities what the aggregate positive review score is on RottenTomatoes.com, starting with the critic score. There are 230 reviews, 230. Um, I'm going to start with Bob today. 
Bob, where do you think those 230 uh, reviewers netted out positivity wise? I think it's going to be high because I've only ever seen like glowing ass reviews for this so far. I don't think I've seen a single negative review, honestly. Um, uh, there's got to be some for sure. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go high with a 90. 90. All right. Let's get crazy. Juice, where are you falling? Not that high, but I agree that there has not been a lot of negative press about this, at least. And that's kind of worrisome to me. Um, yeah, I don't know what's up with that, but I'm going to give this a, a not that high. So I'll play it a little safe, but I'll just I'll take the boys. Give me 86, please. <laughs> the boys. Project All 86. Right. Well, the boys are serving you well. This is 77%. Okay. Uh, certified yeah. fresh. Okay, yeah, Whatever yeah. The, the, the glowing praise we've been hearing, and that is what's been advertised and yeah. mostly what you've seen on horror forums and stuff, or at least I have. But it must have it's been not the only thing. Yeah. On. Okay. That's good. Um, that's good. Okay. 77. Um, we're going to go to the audience score real quick and then we'll read the critics' consensus. Um, We'll start with Juice. Juice, where do you think the 2,500 plus verified ratings net out to? Hmm. Well, I think I got a hell yeet. Oh, God. But I also think, <laughs> I also think uh, it's probably going to be maybe higher. Uh, that's risky. Um, I'll stick with like this. I'll say 75 then. 75. All right, Bob, how about you? 75 um i'll go a little higher uh okay. with an 80 please 80 percent all right boys ready to have your dicks rocked okay 92 yes. percent oh, oh, shit. oh Bob's taking no this. there it is in the 90s oh no what <laughs> you know that i'm the cream of the crop <laughs> the scream of the crop what? What's wrong with all you out there? What's wrong with all of <laughs> you, guys you out there? What's wrong? Um, What's wrong? What's wrong with all of you? Um, the critics' consensus reads as follows. <laughs> certain, certain aspects of horror's most murderously meta franchise may be going stale, but a change of setting and some inventive set pieces help keep Scream 6 reasonably sharp. I think that's a little generous, but... I can understand that. You know what? Though. To be fair, though, this is better than Jason Takes Manhattan. Oh, yeah. yeah you know what? Any day. They cleared that bar with flying colors. <laughs> they crushed Congrats it. to them. To be fair, you know. You know. Which that was what? Part eight? Eight, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well. But Friday part off. six fucks. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So if, if we're going like by numerals, this one is the loser. <laughs> which this one is the first one to use the Roman numeral for some reason. After the movie, it's all over kind of like place. an M. They're, yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. From Scream to Scream 6 Roman numeral. I don't know. I kind of like appreciate that it's, they. we don't have to deal with subtitles though. Like Scream 6, the walk the down Manhattan or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah <laughs> some bullshit. Chase, ghost face. <laughs> ghost face takes Manhattan and all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. He's just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's, <laughs> um, Yep. Also, too, so, one one little more nitpick when they call when they call <laughs> Gail and they're like, "We've never talked on the phone." It's like, how, how do would you, you know? know? Yeah. How would you it's know impossible. that? I don't like them treating Ghostface like that. it's the same fucking person. Yeah. It's not. It's been twelve people. <laughs> they tell you in case you don't know. They, I guess, they tell you. Yeah, that's a, yeah. You could make that a piece of trivia, but you don't have to speak every piece of trivia yeah. out loud in the movie for it to be trivia. And then also fuck um, up. So much, yeah. yeah. Gail, Gail could say, "Wow, I've we've never, never talked yeah. on the phone yeah, before." That's, that, yeah, that's a great point. That's I didn't so even notice stupid. that. But you're totally right. I hate that shit. Very <laughs> stupid. Um, and he even yeah. says, th "So at the beginning, you know, who gives a fuck about <laughs> movies?" And in that conversation, he even says, "Like, well, it's a franchise now. Anybody's game." And it's like, "But how would you know that? You don't give a shit about movies and the rules. It doesn't make any sense. All of a sudden, you care about the rules." It's just, a, it's bad writing. Ugh, it is bad. All right. Reading a negative review off of the critics so that we can find one that is hopefully a little humorous. Uh, <laughs> here's one. There just isn't enough juice behind the stagecraft. 
Come on, Bob. Come on, Juice. Get, get, get I know. Together. Come on. Whoa. There's just not enough juice behind the statecraft. Get the screen there. movies have thrived because they've always stayed one step ahead of their source material. But not as the always. franchise grows more bloated, they risk becoming their own punchline. I think that's pretty apt, personally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I would say that at its best, like we were saying, like when this movie is at when when this franchise is at its best, it's talking about something that other horror movies and other like like the horror community yeah. is just just in a conversation about mm-hmm. skirting yeah. around or yeah I mean, yeah the originals mm-hmm. maybe we've been talking about for like a year the originals <laughs> riffing on the same old tired bullshit that we had seen for like two plus decades in every fucking slasher movie that's mm-hmm. ever been made and it's it's highlighting it and saying oh that's fucking silly and let's, sub- let's subvert these things and change them around and this movie's just doing the same fucking thing it's yeah it's Strange literally the ex- yeah. it's yeah. making the same fucking and mistakes it's frustrating it's cribbing off its own movies and that's yeah. that's how you yeah. know uh, like the I, like, they didn't they couldn't even come up with a clever name for the the horror franchise in this one they didn't even do the cutesy prequels or scream pools or any of that shit it's come on a i don't give me i don't think this was somebody on our slack i think i read this somewhere else but i saw somebody saying like oh they were subverting expectations because the people didn't get killed and i was like stop standing no, for this stop no. no cut that shit I mean, out you can cut sure that, that subverts expectations but not the way that anyone wants that it. is that's, yeah, like, that's, that's not a good thing that is literally yeah, what they could subvert expectations by having you. a tea party with ghost pace in the third act but <laughs> she, that doesn't help anything mindy tells you it's a subversion of a subver- a twist on a twist at the end is what she says oof and like, Oof. if you can't figure that out on your own, like you're probably watching this franchise in a different way than we are, obviously, which is fine Oof. if you just want to yeah. see some murder on the screen, but like, yeah. you shouldn't have to explicitly say that. Dude. And also that's not an interesting twist <laughs> when there's no <laughs> the dudes at all. The dude sitting to my right at the end of the movie, like uh, when the, she says, you got to let me go or whatever, the guy to my right just like and this isn't an Alamo draft house so you're not like there's rules against talking or whatever he just couldn't contain himself and he was like oh my god that's the cheesiest shit I ever heard in my life <laughs> or some, I, thought yeah. was so, I laughed it I laughed so hard at that anyway so that's our Rotten Tomato segment um no, we're not men of the people this week by any means. Nah, that's no. okay. Sorry for yeah. shitting all over this movie that I'm sure a lot of you listening really enjoyed. Um, you can still yeah, like that's it, though. Fair. That's she yeah. is a super duper pooper. We are super right. duper poopers this week. Glad you liked yeah. it, though. I wish I loved it. I want to. And we just cemented yeah. the fact that we will never appear in any Scream film. Buddy, I mean, that, I shit was, that was our shit was in cement to they're not, cemented, they're yeah. not calling it. <laughs> Let me. You mean they're not scraping the bottom of the barrel yet? Maybe if they come to Seoul, then they'll you know call Soju, but probably just call somebody the, else. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm in Seoul. I have to call Soju the person right now. <laughs> That's what I have to do. Uh, we we got a little bit of trivia on this one. Let, let's go ahead and jump into it. It's totally time for trivia. Totally time for trivia. Uh, so this movie was greenlit on February 3rd, 2022, three weeks after, uh, scream or five cream was released. So they greenlit this one pretty quick. Also, uh, just to be clear, we mentioned scream seven was greenlit. That is not officially announced. There was like, Oh really? Somebody at like geek rant dot gov or whatever oh, the fuck God. like found like has a person on the inside president said, biden says scream yeah. seven is on its way yeah somebody knows somebody <laughs> who said scream seven's greenlit and it's filming this year that has not officially been announced yet we need to just start putting like the hottest takes just on bullshit. our uh, bullshit yeah. on our website yeah <laughs> i'm just uh, gonna start writing the most bullshit article. we don't need, we don't need to be armand white here That's, uh, we're already just gonna have enough. chad gpt make up the most crazy <laughs> right, scream seven <laughs> would probably write be me a hot Look, take Eddie, you have gonorrhea <laughs> chat gpt write a hot take on <laughs> dude chat gpt could write a scream movie that is as good as this i guarantee it that it should be the it scream could. seven they should <laughs> they should absolutely that is prescient the yeah. first feature film major yeah, written motion by picture AI. written by ai and it would make no sense and that would be fine it'll Let's be as it, noble or whatever be made <laughs> uh, this movie did make forty four and a half million dollars opening weekend, so we are getting another one for sure. That's a franchise yeah. record for opening weekend as well. Is um, it? Yeah, franchise Shit. record. Oof. Uh, Neve Campbell uh, obviously wasn't in this movie on June sixth, twenty twenty two. She said sorry, she would did not. You say Neve, Neve, Neff, whatever. That's how it's pronounced. Rob claims. 
I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Said she's not going to be in this movie um, because I guess uh, there was some sort of salary dispute between her and pa- Paramount. She claimed they weren't uh, paying her what they would pay um, a man who basically starred in, in the previous five movies, which... Hey, get your money. I don't, you know, no hate. I also totally don't think we needed her in this movie. We sure shit didn't need Gail. That is for sure. Yeah, nah. Oh, she sure shit didn't need to stay alive to be no. in another one. No, she didn't. <laughs> Maybe she's got a clause in her contract or some shit. I don't know where she can't actually die. I don't know, man. It just doesn't make oh my sense. God. Probably. Um, Honestly, that's probably true. The, um, this is the first acting credit for Hayden Panettiere in five years. She had not done anything for a while. Um, but uh, I guess she actually contacted, um, I don't know if it was the directors or, or who she contacted, but she hit him up and was like, hey, apparently I'm a fucking fan favorite and, and you don't really see me die. So they had her uh, in this movie. Um, you know what's crazy is we don't actually know if Stu died. So What? <laughs> <laughs> what if he was in the next movie? Oh my god! If they to be fair, we don't know if shit. anybody died. Maybe it's just all the killers are coming back. The next, what if that the next was screen movie should end with fucking, Billy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just real Billy, not Ghost uh, Billy. <laughs> just creeping the, around. The I mean, next that, movie should end with they they unveil just the scream mask or whatever, and it's and it's a Matthew Lillard mask under it, and then he pulls it <laughs> off, and it's John Kramer. He's been lying dead on the floor of the whole movie. What if they went full <laughs> fucking Scooby Doo? Yes, said. And it turns out that Billy was alive the whole time, but he was somehow using like a projector on his body to make him oh, look yeah. translucent. Pepper's Ghost, sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, my full God. Scooby Doo that shit. I would have gotten away with it too. Um. It wasn't for you kids and your dog that they now have that can talk. Um, all right, trivia. Uh, this that is the first. Talk. Ross gets so worked up. <laughs> I'm so mad at this movie I'm making up. <laughs> then now they got a fucking dog. That well, these can people talk. are these idiots. Dogs. I can't believe they wrote Scrappy Doo into <laughs> the sequel I'm writing in my head. I mean, that would be different. That would be different. Rob just loves Scream so much. I do. Know? I love Scream. Mm. Uh, this is the first Scream movie to be shot outside the United States. Um, it was shot in Montreal, Canada. Uh, so not mm. actually filmed in New York. Living City. up to it, the the takes Manhattan yeah. reputation of not filming anywhere yeah. near its you titular spot. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike Shinoda wrote a song called Still Alive that's featured in this movie with Demi Lovato, um, which okay. apparently is a jam. It's getting a lot of play. Uh, this is the longest I heard it. the longest movie in the entire franchise. Two hours and two minutes. Not um, so much longer. No, I didn't, I, I, didn't, like, longer. I didn't feel that much longer, certainly. Nah, but they're all about feel two either. hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the taglines for this movie was New York, New Rules. Wow, which new new decade new rules was the tagline for Scream Four, so it's kind of harkening back to that. Uh, this is the first in the franchise that has three killers, which you could argue there's definitely four and maybe even five if you count the dude that's dead in the fridge that planned to kill people but didn't. Yeah. yeah. Um, so four or five, really, uh, which is nuts. Uh, this movie we added nothing to that conversation. This movie has the highest amount of survivors uh there are seven uh gail kirby sam tara mindy chad and danny all survive and i'm sure was it this movie supposed to in even within the confines of the movie they say that it's supposed to have a higher body count is that accurate to this movie i believe it's it's a version randy yeah they say they're gonna do it but they don't have to do it i think they don't have to do fucking anything because franchises do anything like that's (laughs) That's not an angle. That's the opposite of an angle. We yeah. don't have to be a worm that infects people, so we won't. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Jason goes to I, hell. Come on. Oh, uh, okay. What? I guess. <laughs> Dude, what if they turn into worms in Scream 7? Seven? seven Cream? They're just worms. Dude. Worm people. Seven Cream well, people's we'll face see. physically morph into ghost faces. That's how it happens. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder if they're going to go to California for part seven and just... Redo I mean, fucking movie, Scream Three again. The whole. I mean, just Woodsboro is a California town. Like the whole, it's a s- Southern California tale. No, oh, wow. ever man. <laughs> um, that, that's that's all. Going to Mexico. That's all. That's new space. You, you boys like Mexico. 
That's all the trivia <laughs> that I have. Uh, let's Spring talk. Break. Let's talk. Cooter of the week. <laughs> Uh, Juice, what's a cooter? Why do we hunt them? Oh, cooter's character type and a straight shell and exclusive. Cooter must have three of these five points to be considered a cooter. We want the cooter with the most points. The five points of cooterdom are sexual deviance, manipulation, smug arrogance, overall looking attire, and overall patheticness. Boys. Do we have a cooter in six cream? Probably. Mm, I think we have a basic stock standard cooter, maybe in the date rapist at the Halloween party. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. Mm-hmm. That's a date rapist. So yeah. You got sexual Sex deviance. Manipulation and sexual deviance. Yeah. Some Ooh, smug all the beers are gone. I got some Goldschlag in my room. He's, bitch. He comes straight out of the book. He's a I got some cores in my in my room. Yeah. <laughs> got some I'm, tall oh, man, it's, <laughs> You want to taste the Rockies, baby? <laughs> it's always cold. They never let it get hot. <laughs> It's great. <laughs> um, so sexual deviance, manipulation. I feel like he was wearing something really fucking cootery, but I can't remember. He was dressed up was. as a risky business, uh, I think. Oh, right. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's enough. I that's think that's dressing enough. as a cooter <laughs> for Halloween yeah. is cooter behavior. <laughs> Thinking that that's a cool costume that you want to emulate that man. Yeah, that's Dude, enough. No, um, you got to go that's, murder that, party you know what, costume. That costume says to me, I don't want to invest in a costume. <laughs> that says I took my <laughs> pants off. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So he's we got all the cooter light at least. Smug minimum. arrogance, I think, is high. I think so. Yeah. Manipulation is in there. So sexual deviance. So we got at least those three. Looking boom, attire. Boom. Yeah, I think so. Shitty costume. Patheticness. Yeah. More or less, the package is pathetic. So. Yeah. He has a pathetic package. I don't think there's a <laughs> whole. I mean. Shocked. Do we want to go to the killer family then? Do we count them as a unit? Yeah, we, we just can. Go after Mulroney? We can. We can. So. Um, patheticness yes yeah. manipulation <laughs> for sure across the board my boy he was a sweet boy he just liked to collect murder weapons and yeah, i what? loved him for it what perhaps i overindulged oh, okay what? Dermot. okay yeah you Dermot. got him a bloody knife like <laughs> I got 12 bloody murder evidence. weapons <laughs> I got you some also, evidence for your birthday. This dude's son. a cop in New York. How the fuck is he going to get evidence they killed Dewey one year ago from Woodsboro after his son's dead? If his son's dead, why is he still collecting murder things? Because he's finishing his son's know. work. I, who cares, man? It's bullshit. Uh, also, that's so much money to, to rent a theater in New York City. For <laughs> decade a decade maybe like yeah yeah okay nope. Dude, perhaps the I defund the police movement didn't go anywhere so i know i'm no cop <laughs> but i don't i don't think they're pulling that much money <laughs> he's pulling that seven figure new york city <laughs> cop money everybody Just knows. Uh, let the collection chill here cops are millionaires <laughs> new york real estate Whoa. is cheap as fuck duh yeah oh yeah <laughs> famously um, cheap <laughs> uh, so manipulation across the board, uh, patheticness mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, sexual deviance. I don't really think that applies to any. No, uh, I mean, if we get the whole family in there, I mean, the sister's just banging away. Yeah, but she's, she's getting that strange. Whatever. She's her own. Yeah, woman. that's fine. That's she's fine. Her yeah. Own murderous woman. I love how they um, do uh, the sister. She's just fucks and fucks and fucks. And the brother is just an incel little wiener piece of shit. <laughs> I think even you know what? Oh what man, you just characters. made me remember something that bothered me, which is <laughs> the one piece of pathos they give the incel character is when yeah. the dad says something about like you never, you, you always remember your first son and how proud you are of him or something. Says so something yeah. about his first son and it shows him and he's like, Ooh, I don't like that. And it's like <laughs> I'm we could have done something son. with that. Maybe anything like yeah. have them turn on each other. Something maybe the two kids kill Dermot. Do yeah. something. Anything. Oh, yeah. Do <laughs> anything. anything. <laughs> Please. Um, well, uh, do yeah. they, they don't have... Uh, they, are their tires normal, I guess? Um, it's standard operating smug, ghost space. Arrogance, yeah. for sure. For sure. Yes. yes. So they get I it. They so. get it. They got at least yeah. three, yeah. for sure. 
Kind of. Yeah. We got a couple cooters here. Yeah. We, yeah. Got, a, we got a whole bag <laughs> of cooters. Yeah. We got garden variety cooter. We got family of killer cooters. Yeah. You know, we got all kinds. Lock them up. It's you looking for hereditary. cooters? We got them. We got them. We, we got you want them? We got, we got brother cooters. We got sister cooters. We, we got cop cooters. We got, we got daddy them all. cooters. Whoa. We daddy got cooters. sister cooters. Damn. I have a daddy <laughs> kink. We need to. Well, we need to be God. Nah. Redacted. Redacted. No. Uh, we got sit, all... sit in it, Bob. We're going to sit in it. <laughs> sit in your duty draws, Bob. All day. <laughs> you know I'm team cummy draws. We went over this. <laughs> We are very impressed. There's a whole team. There's a team. <laughs> I'm on it. Um, I think Go back to next episode if last, you're wondering what the fuck we're talking yeah, about. Last week's episode. You team doo doo draws, team cummy draws. You can only Go be one. Go to Scream 4. Episode. There was a third option, but who cares? All right. Let's <laughs> move on. Who cares? No draws. Um, that's it. I think we got our cooter of the week. We got him locked up. Uh, we're running a little bit long. Let's skip what we've been watching this week. And we got a couple voicemails. So let's jump into our hotline screams. Hotline screams. If you are listening and would like to call in and leave a voicemail to be featured on next week's show, hit us up at 904 638 3231. Uh, we got a couple voicemails here. First up, we're going to hear from Jackie B. Let's hear what she's got to say. What up, boys? It's Jackie B calling from Chicago. I haven't called in in quite a while, and I thought I would chime in, um, listening to the new Scream episode late night, um, getting ready for Green 6, 6 Cream. Coming up, and uh, I just, y'all were talking, Soju was mentioning about um, basically like a railroad worker at the end of the episode. You guys were talking about like how somebody could possibly like, you know, have any brain function post-death, and uh, he couldn't recall the name of the railroad worker, and I was, uh, I took a class in college about like a psychology course, and basically... Uh, Phineas Gage is the guy that I think I'm pretty sure Soju was mentioning, but it's this railroad worker who like had some horrible freak accident happen to him where like something went through his brain and he like lost uh brain function for like a month. But basically like the thing that shocked people is he came back completely to full brain function, except his entire personality changed. And, uh, I just thought that was, like, super interesting. And, like, you know, Andy was mentioning kind of, like, left and right brain stuff. And that was a huge landmark case in psychology about how, like, left and right brain interact and how it, like, affects personality and stuff. So, I don't know. I thought I'd chime in. Also, y'all were mentioning, I think, in a previous prompt of, like, who is the character you love to hate in horror. I don't know if you would consider Game of Thrones horror, but Ramsey Bolton... I love to hate that guy. It is a genius, genius portrayal of a despicable character. So, uh, yeah, that's my two cents. Uh, loving the content. Thanks for all the listening. And, yeah, keep chilling. Bye, guys. Good call on the Ramsey Bolton. That, that's a good yeah, one. Yeah, that's um, a good one. Yeah. He that, is those, uh, the yes. Phineas Gage stuff that we talked about last week or whatever, and like the the connection between left and right brain, that whole cons like both of those like ideas are so fucking interesting, and I think that they're kind of like they got to be brought up in like every psychology class and it's ever been made oh. since those things came out. It's like those and like the um whatever that that oh my god the prison experiment Stanford prison experiment yeah 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 and Pavlov those are like or the even- four hits you gotta play. <laughs> I think Heidelberg was bringing up the the hand thing too, where you like get the hammer and you like put your hand over here and you put a fake oh, hand yeah, in front yeah. of you and you like can f- like they'll tickle it with a feather and shit and then yeah. they'll go to hit it with the hammer and your like body is like fuck oh, no yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that shit's wild yeah. it is um, crazy man yeah the brain's weird it's weird <laughs> it's it's a real 
problem. Thank you. We're all head scratcher <laughs> this break. Keep it together <laughs> and not blasted in half if you can. Recommend. Well, I don't know. You might get some special powers. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, you might come back a totally chill person. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah. Whatever, bro. Might hey, work out for you. Might be able to fly. Who knows? <laughs> like, Maybe. What if, what, what if this lobotomy just started flying, dog? Um, <laughs> uh, lobotomies freak me out. I, like I can't it. imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> they sound great. <laughs> Scrambled eggs. Ah. Um, yeah, solid uh, character to hate for sure. Goddamn, mm. Ramsey is a son of a bitch. I have a hard time even saying that I love him, even just to hate him because he's yeah. so goddamn good. You know, I think oh, you're really under- Team Todd meets Team <laughs> Ramsey oh, yeah. this week on <laughs> Street Chilling. <laughs> you know, he's kind of a gentle soul when you think about it. <laughs> you know, so you, everybody can be pushed to their limits. <laughs> He just had a bad day. You guys don't you know. He know just him. wasn't loved by his dad. You know, you guys just <laughs> don't get it. I just, th- I always <laughs> made me do it, did he? Oh, hell yeah. I always envision him in that scene where he's just like eating that sausage menacingly. The sausage. Yeah. <laughs> yes. that's, what a yeah. son of a bitch. He's uh, a true son of a bitch. Who are you calling a cootie queen, you lint liquor? Mm-hmm. Oh man! Uh, Who's thanks, next, Bob? Thanks for calling in, oh, Jackie sorry. B. Hope you enjoyed Six Cream. Uh, next up, we're gonna hear from your boy Naderade. What's he got to say? What up, boys? Naderade. So I just got out of uh, Cream Six. I had fun with it. It was good. It was it was all right. I do have my problems with it. Um. Forgive me, I'm driving through a blizzard, so I'm plotting on a lot of black ice. It's good. Ooh. Fine. So, Cream 6. Um, what's there to say? It's pretty much Scream Deuce, am I right? Yes. Killers had the same motive. <laughs> uh, family members of the original killers. Uh, even, even the ending took place in a theater, just like Scream Deuce. So, did they? Did the filmmakers know that they're pretty much rehashing the producer? Yes. I don't know. It's all coincidence. Yeah. Three killers, though. That was pretty dope. I did like that. One of which, the son, he was garbage. Look at that fucking Evan Peters. Poor man, Evan Peters look alike. Yeah, fuck that guy. I did like the dad cop being a killer. I love the daughter being a killer. That was that was a cool reveal. I did like that one. But the other Peter was looking motherfucker. Fuck that kid. I got I pinpointed him from the get go that he was one of the killers. Oh, what else? Yep. Yeah, nope. That's it. I got to do a game of fuck Mary kill. The three killers from Scream Six. Who you got? Love ya. Bye. All right, I got it. I already got it. Ready? All right, yeah. I'm going to kill the incel brother, okay? Fuck mm-hmm. the sister. Marry the Diddy, because apparently that dude is loaded to be oh, written yeah. out of that theater. He's, <laughs> he's just swimming in evidence. Yeah. Valuable, valuable <laughs> evidence. Yep, so I'm set. I'm good. Good to go. Yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> just because you're married to D. Mole Rooney, D. Money. Doesn't mean you got to yeah. consummate that bitch. No, especially you know statistics what? show. Gotta, using you a similar logic, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree with okay. similar logic because uh, theoretically, these two only kids of this man would inherit that man's money um, and would put up less of a fight if they're an inside little bitch asshole. Um, <laughs> so I would sell dickhead, uh, keep him as my fucking... Uh, piece of shit that cleans my house for me and then uh, you, you would yeah. fuck Randy, him all his money randy's a rough dude no no no, him- no consummation same as you oh you, you set those rules oh no sorry uh, yeah. you, you went you went i got gotcha. I, I couldn't hear what you said to marry you're marrying the incel you're i would marrying still the marry incel. his sister no i'm sorry so i would still fuck fuck uh what's her name okay um, the sister marry incel asshole and keep just have him do shit for me and okay. take his money 
Okay. And then killed Dermot because okay. he would be the actual person gotcha. capable of stopping me. Gotcha. And I'm a villain now. I just by describing there my intentions. <laughs> That's some, <laughs> if you talk, if you play a fuck Mary kill long enough, you become the villain. Got to. You got to <laughs> kill someone, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. I think team Randy or team Soju. Oh man. Are you going to be your own man? Make your own decisions. Fuck Dermot. <laughs> Bob, you're, it, don't be scared. It'd probably be a, a wild fuck. Yeah, all right. All right. I'll marry the broad. I'll put anything in my ass. I'm desperate. I'll marry the broad. I'll fuck some D monies. And then all I'll right. kill the right. incel kid. Okay. All there right. You go. There you go. That was uh, an uncomfortable game of a fuck, marry, kill. Awesome. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Uh, please uh, probably don't call us when you're driving through a blizzard. Next time, though, that sounds yeah dangerous. Be uh, careful. Yeah, hopefully uh, you got home safely. Drive safe, kids. Be safe out mm-hmm. there. Shit's wild. Um, good to hear from you, Naderade. Uh, we we don't have any more voicemails. We did get um, an email though, and I think Juice, you were talking about saving the answer to this for a potential YouTube video. Um, but uh, Carmen D sent an email asking for an updated uh, Scream franchise uh, ranking. Do you want to hold on to that? Mm, yeah, let's hold on to that. Okay. More to come on that uh, in your YouTube <laughs> feeds. <laughs> we'll call that a tease. <laughs> <sighs> um, yeah, that's all. That's all the voicemails we got. Again, if you want to call in and leave a voicemail to be featured on next week's show, hit us up at 904-638-3231. Gentlemen, uh, you guys have prompts you want to throw out for next week, Juice? I do. So we kind of used this one before and some other things, but I would say, how could you, how could you save this? How could you save this trilogy reboot trilogy? You know how how can they wrap it up successfully? With I say wrap it up, I don't, I don't know at this yeah, point. That's, yeah, that's a pipe dream in and of itself. <laughs> but uh, realistically, like what what would be a, a really solid ending for you for? Scream 7 to wrap. Hot tub Christianity. <laughs> Hot tub Christianity would be a hell of an ending. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Baptize me in the warm waters. <laughs> warm <laughs> burbling waters of your burbling. jacuzzi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Our baptistry's hated. Baptistry. <laughs> this baptismal font has glowy lights under the water. <laughs> we treat it like a sauna when it's not Sundays. <laughs> sure. Would you like some sacrament? <laughs> oh, Rand, dude. <laughs> well, that got dark. Um, yeah. <laughs> also, uh, maybe call in and, and provide your own Scream franchise ranking, your updated franchise ranking. Where does uh, Six Cream land in, in the lineup for you? Let us know. Mm-hmm. Good call. Both good prompts. Uh, so, we're going to be back next week with a brand new show, as always. We're going to be talking about. Actually, the last Patreon pick of the first quarter of the year. Uh, this was chosen by your boy Matt S. Uh, the movie um, is called The Witching Hour from 2015. It's actually a uh, it's an anthology. It's a collection of five shorts um, that, as far as I understand, I haven't seen it, <clears throat> but from what I understand, they're all set on or around Halloween. So we're talking two Ooh, Halloween no. movies back to back. Justin's schedule's all fucked up now. Wow. The only thing about about Six Cream was, yeah, you're like you see the Halloween, but there wasn't a lot of Halloween vibes. Like there wasn't that's a autumn vibe. Not a single jack o' lantern. That's why I don't give it as a as a positive because it doesn't strike yeah, me as very it didn't. Halloween. Yeah, it surprisingly didn't have the vibes, it's, which is it's weird. just people in costumes wearing masks, and then that's yeah. it, that's which it, just serves it. to be more. <laughs> like references, just references time. Yeah. 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 yeah it's yeah. it's where's Waldo more than it is Halloween. They could have amped yeah. up the Halloween vibes more for sure. I mean You guys want to sneak in one more nitpick before we close things out? <laughs> yeah. It's it's so easy because they just didn't nail it. Um yeah. Being so, Randy. It's so easy being Randy. Uh check out the Witching Hour. That is also on Amazon Prime uh for free. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it there. I know you can also get it on Blu-ray. 
Um, and I'm sure you could probably rent it on just whatever various service you have. So check out The Witching Hour from 2015. Get ready for next week's show. Until then, hit us up on all the social medias. You know where to find us. Uh, if you want to join in in our daily Slack channel conversations, hit us up on one of those social media outlets. Say you'd like to join, and I'll send you a link so you can do so. Uh, we're definitely going to be talking about Six Cream this week, um, as well as definitely The Last of Us whatever everybody else has been watching. We share pictures of our adorable pets, trade food recipes, and just whatever else we want to talk about. It's a great community. Join. You won't regret it. Um, that's going to do it. There's even a straight chilling after dark. So. Yes. <laughs> but uh, Increasingly so. <laughs> but no awkward, weird dick pics, I promise. No, no. I promise. The bitch should be examined to make sure that all the nipples are okay. Yeah. <laughs> That is a long bump <laughs> with some twists and turns. Uh, okay. Until next week, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling.